Okay, chapter 35. Yay! So, here are your learning outcomes. Review and look over those. Hepatitis. Okay, inflammation of the cells of the liver. Um, this can be bacterial infection, drugs, alcohol, chemical toxics, to, toxins to the liver, um, metabolic or vascular disorders. It can be a combination. It can be one or the other. Often caused by a virus, okay? Um, we have various types, A, B, C, D, or E, um, of viral hepatitis. So um, the most common is in the United States is HBV. So you can see a very good table of this illustration. And I want to highly recommend you to be familiarized with is on page 693, table 35.1. That continues to page 695. So again, just familiarize yourself. Know that there are different types. A through E, right? Prevention, transmission precautions, standard precautions, hand hygiene, um, vaccines. We have some vaccines, um, immunoglobin, and then public health measures, okay? Signs and symptoms. Um, so these are flu-like symptoms that you're going to see for hepatitis. Right upper quadrant. Okay, um, eccentric stage, last two to six weeks, jaundice, worsening of symptoms, then the convalescent. Um, so starting with the prodromal to the convalescent, that's the um, signs and symptoms path that it kind of takes. Um, what are the complications? Liver failure, acute and chronic, um, chronic infection, carrier virus. So Often, um, people that can get hepatitis that have acute, uh, this type of complications can possibly be those that are um, exposed there, so they're going to contract it, but they don't have, like, the, maybe they're homeless, or they don't have an ability to um, get well, have all of the um, medications, get their immune system back into order, and be able to fight that off and they might be also dealing with addiction which is going to keep their body um, immunocompromised so we see chronic infections and you can have death and liver fail liver failure and then death sorry um okay these are some tests um therapeutic interventions identify the cause so what was the cause liver monitor their liver functions um, relieve some the symptoms that you can. You want to prevent cirrhosis. Um, educate them on hydrate, hydration and nutrition. Rest. So that's what I was saying. People that if you're homeless, it's not very restful. Um, you don't have a place that's safe and consistent always. And so absolutely hydration and nutrition are going to be after that. Um, avoiding alcohol and liver toxics drugs. So... Um, if your liver has been beaten up already and they have those type of conditions, it's very hard to, um, you know, you can see very young fatality rates from hepatitis. Okay, here are some more ther therapeutic interventions. Um, antivirals, okay, these are like what we can, liver transplants, if they are in good shape, they can get a liver transplant possibly. You cannot be an active alcoholic um, or drug addict if you are going to get a transplant. Um, there are certain criteria. Here are nursing diagnosis options. Acute liver failure. Okay, let's follow along in the book. Where are we at? Acute liver failure. Uh, 
Okay, I'm going to keep going because I don't see it, but it's there. I just don't want to take all our time. These are our signs and symptoms. Um, we see jaundice. Um, somebody with um, jaundice, there's a great illustration of that on page 696, figure 35.1. Um, you can see um, hepatic encephalopathy, confusion or coma, so it will affect the brain. Obviously, bleeding. Um, these are some of the serum tests that can be done. Blood serum tests. Um, okay, therapeutic interventions. You have to eliminate all drugs. Diet has to be, you know, um, a good healthy diet and possibly a liver transplant. Um, the patient has to be rehabilitated as much as possible in order to get them in shape for a liver transplant because it is a pretty um, extensive process. Um, 3.9 million had chronic liver disease and cirrhosis in 2015. So you can see the number there. Um, it can be reversible if they have early treatment. Um, okay, um, chronic alcohol use is the most common cause of cirrhosis and chronic liver disease, um, or it can be chronic HBV or HCV, so hepatitis, um, non-alcoholic, Stethiohepatitis can be um, the cause as well. So they have cirrhosis doesn't mean they automatically are alcoholics. It's just a most common cause of it. Um, patho, um, it's an inflammation of the liver cells. Um, infiltration with fat and white blood cells, so not good. Um, fibrotic scar tissue replaces liver. We have impaired liver blood flow, impaired liver functions. So LFTs are going to be liver function tests, are going to be a laboratory test, uh, a serum blood test that we're going to be checked as well. I think that was already covered in a previous slide. I saw this on page 702, this diagram. So we are talking about signs and symptoms. So that's a very good illustration there. Complications, clotting defects, portal hypertension, varices and ascites, yes. Um, so make sure that you are familiar with those. Those are on page 703. Um, portal hypertension. Okay. Tests. Interventions. Ascites. Um, for ascites, you want to give treat them with diuretics, sodium retention, a beam infused. These are the things the doctor is going to give them. Um, varices, okay, so if they have varices, vasoconstrictors, because they're having bleeding. Um, transfusions, antibiotic, prophylactically. So um, you can see what those varices, those are seen... Um, This is on page 703. I don't see it here. I don't want to take our time. Okay, so I'm going to keep going, but look at that. Um, medications. Nursing diagnosis options. Patient education. Liver transplant, candidates, liver failure, no cancer, no complications, otherwise stable. Anti-rejection medications, okay. Um, signs of rejection. So our bodies after a, any organ transplant, honestly, um, liver will show um, signs of rejection by our body will be um, elevated pulse, your temperature uh, increase, right upper quadrant pain, increase in jaundice, um, elevated liver enzymes. Okay, cancer of the liver. Cancer of the liver, um, risk factors, uh, hepatitis, uh, nutritional deficiencies, exposure to hepatotoxins. Okay, 
signs and symptoms we see encephalopathy, um, bleeding, jaundice, and ascites. Um, okay, here's our diagnostic testing that we can have done, that the doctor will order, that you will see. You need to be collecting, make sure that it's available. Um, intervention, surgery, chemotherapy, radiation. Acute pancreatitis, okay. Acute pancreatitis is on page 706. Um, here's the patho, it's inflammation, autodigestion, elevated enzymes, fluid loss. And our etiology for alcohol, gallstones, elevated triglycerides, endoscopic, retrograde, okay, all of these things here, medications um, you want to look through. These are all covered here. Um, the table 35.4 is a great little page. Pancreatitis summary, it's on page 707. Make sure you look at that. Um, nourish, nutrition notes, nourishing patient with pancreatitis is also a great, it's an orange box, pink box, whatever. Look at that. Um, these are things that are going to be um, something that we, our part, nursing, that we will be involved in um, with the patient. And... Um, Complications, we can see cardiovascular failure, acute respiratory distress syndrome, um, kidney injury, hemorrhage, infection. Um, okay, diagnostic testing. We want to see presence of two items here. So <clears throat> abdominal pain or serum amylase greater than three times the normal abdominal imaging positive. So you can see this on imaging. Interventions will continue, or we're gonna see here with aggressive IV fluids, mild to severe nutritional status, uh, supplementation, analgesics, antibiotics for sepsis, which can cause death. <clears throat> um, Patho, etiology, what are our risk factors? Always smoking, alcohol, prevention, asymptomatic, um, it can go to um, epigastric, uh, pains, nausea, vomiting, weight loss, all these different signs and symptoms. Some may have none, some may have all complications, abscess, fistulas, pleural effusions. Okay. This is for chronic. Now we've moved from acute into chronic pancreatitis. Low fat meals, they can put stents in. Um, this is your nursing diagnosis options. Cancer of the pancreas, very serious. Smoking, obesity, work exposure to chemicals, DM, chronic pancreatitis. Okay. Early on, you can see that weight loss, abdominal pain radiates to the back, worsens at night, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, fullness. Cancer gives that feeling of fullness often. Um, signs and symptoms. Here we have paritis, depression, fatigue, jaundice. Okay, preoperative and postoperatively, the things that we can do. Or we will see diagnostic testing, therapeutic interventions, uh, the Whipple procedure is on page 712. Um, this is something that is um, for cancer of the head of the pancreas, if it's at the top. 
Okay, so try to wrap this up. These are your nursing diagnosis options, patient education, management of hyperglycemia, okay, dressing, complications, hospice, end of life, gallbladder, that's for cancer, gallbladder disorders, cholecystitis. Okay, we're going to see these on page 713. It starts. These are very, very common. These are something that you often see. Um, table 35.6 on page 715 it gives you a very good um, symptoms of gallbladder disorders. These are our complications. What our diagnostic testings would include. Therapeutic interventions. Okay, and this is the treatment, cholecystectomy. So this is a removed gallbladder. Um, they're going to show you, see they take that out there. Um, medications to dissolve the stones. Um, nursing diagnosis, acute pain. Um, risk for impaired skin integrity and ineffective breathing patterns. Okay, and then we get to our review questions. Make sure you quiz yourself on these. All right.